to all the viewers. I, Dr. Amrita Igbode, Assistant Professor in Sanjayi Institute for Orthopedics and Rehabilitation College of Physiotherapy, welcome you all to another Physiotherapy Classroom session. Today, we are going to um, talk about anatomy of the spinal cord. Tips for today are, at the end, the student would be, the viewer would be able to describe the external anatomy of the spinal cord, describe the internal anatomy of the spinal cord, describe the spinal nerves, describe the meninges and describe the reflex, describe a reflex and a reflex arc. Now, according to the uh, general anatomical organization, structurally, if we see the central nervous system consists of brain and spinal cord and the peripheral nervous system it consists of nerves and the ganglia. The nerves consisting of cranial nerves as well as the spinal nerves. Now, uh, let's look at the um, general terminologies like First and foremost, uh, what is a ganglion? So a group of neurons outside of the CNS is called as a ganglion, whereas the same group of neurons, if it is inside or within the CNS, it is called as a nucleus. If the group of nerve fibers, uh, which are located outside the CNS, they are called as nerves, whereas the same uh, group of nerve fibers within the CNS is called as a tract. So let's talk about the general anatomy of spinal cord. Spinal cord, as we all know, it is the main pathway for information connecting the brain and the peripheral nervous system. It is an elongated cylindrical uh, structure which is suspended in the vertebral canal and it is protected by the vertebrae or the vertebral column. So um, it, it is also surrounded by the meninges which are the protective layers or the external layers uh, surrounding the spinal cord and it is filled with a fluid which is the cerebrospinal fluid. The primary function of spinal cord is a transmission of neural signals between the brain and the rest of the body. It consists of uh, sensory neurons, motor neurons, as well as the local reflexes or the reflex as that we will be talking about further. It extends, um, <clears throat> so the spinal cord, it, the extension of the spinal cord is from the foramen magnum, which is at the base of the skull, right here, and to the second lumbar vertebrae. It is uh, a con it is continuous above with the medulla oblongata since uh, as we all know uh, spinal cord is an extension of the medulla oblongata right and it goes from the foramen magnum okay and it is tapered in uh, at the inferior end by uh, by a structure and it forms uh, conus medullaris here as you can see in the picture since uh, it is a cone like structure that is why it is called as conus medullaris. It is uh, connected to the coccyx by a non-neuronal cord called the phylum terminale. From uh, the, as soon as the uh, spinal cord ends at the inferior uh, end at the conus medullaris, it extends up to the coccyx in the form of phylum terminale. Spinal cord it gives rise to gives rise to thirty one pairs of spinal nerves. The bundle of spinal nerves extending inferiorly from the lumbosacral enlargement and conus medullaris they surround the phylum terminal and form the corda equina. So here, if you can see in the picture, this is the conus medullaris. Okay, this is at the end of the lumbosacral segment. It is going to extend up to the coccyx, right, in the form of phylum terminal. But the nerve fibers which are there or the bundle of spinal nerves which are extending from this conus medullaris, from this conus medullaris to the uh, coccyx, it's called as the coda equina. So the bundle of spinal nerve is called the coda equina, whereas the non-neuronal cord is called as the phylum termini. Uh, we talked about that uh, spinal cord, it gives rise to 31 pairs of spinal nerves. So the uh, distribution of 31 pairs is there are eight cervical spinal nerves, 12 thoracic nerves, 5 lumbar, 5 sacral and 1 coccygeal nerve. It also has two enlargements in the form of uh, at the uh, cervical and the lumbar regions. The cervical enlargement here, it uh, supplies the uh, muscles of the upper limb, which is also called as the brachial plexus and lumbosacral enlargement, it supplies the lower limbs, which is also called as the lumbosacral pe uh, plexus. Now, uh, before we talked about a general uh, anatomy of the spinal cord, let's move on to and let's move on and talk about the cross section of the spinal cord. So the spinal cord is incompletely divided into two equal parts. So here, as you can see, this is a cross section or a transverse section of the spinal cord. So um, it is incompletely divided. 
here, if you can see, it is still connected, but divided into right and the left halves. Anteriorly, it is divided by a short, shallow, median fissure, if you can see in the picture. And posteriorly, it is divided by a deep, narrow septum, which is called as the posterior median sulcus. Okay, it uh, the composition of the spinal cord is in such a way that it consists of uh, gray matter in the center. If you can see in the picture, the gray uh, there is a gray matter in the center and surround uh, which is surrounded by white matter and supported by neuroglia. The uh, there are commissure fibers which uh, connect the right and the left halves as well as there are spinal roots or uh, spinal roots from where the spinal nerves arise and then they combine to form a roots. So uh, there are three types, two types of, main two types of roots, which is the dorsal root and the uh, ventral. Dorsal is the posterior root and ventral is the anterior root. They may also merge laterally and form the spinal nerve. Now let's talk about gray matter in detail okay so the arrangement of gray matter here if you can see in the picture of in the spinal cord resembles the shape of an h the letter h right it has two posterior horns two anterior horns as well as two lateral uh, hands or uh, horns or columns it consists of nerve cell bodies and their processes neuroglia and blood vessels we will be we will be talking about all of these uh, structures in detail so, first and foremost, we're talking about the gray matter. As I said, it has two posterior horns, two anterior horns, and two lateral horns. It also consists of nerve cell bodies, neuroglia, and blood vessels. So, the nerve cells, these are multipolar nerve cells, and they are of three main categories. First is sensory neurons, low motor neurons, and interneurons. The sensory neurons are also called as the tract cells. They receive impulses from the periphery of the body and whose exons constitute the ascending fascicula or ascending column of the white matter. So here, as the name suggests, sensory neurons. So sensory is going to be from the periphery to the center, right? So it is always going to constitute the ascending fascicula of the white matter. It is located in the dorsal horns. So here, in the posterior horns of the uh, spinal cord, sensory neurons are present. Next, we talk about lower motor neurons. They transmit impulses to the skeletal muscles. So as the name suggests, motor neurons. So motor is always going to be from the center to the periphery, right? So they transmit impulses to the skeletal muscles and they are located in the ventral horns or the anterior horns of the spinal cord. These uh, lower motor neurons, they also constitute the preganglionic neurons of the autonomic nervous system if they are present in the lateral horns, okay? So the um, neurons which are present in the lateral horn, right? Uh, they constitute the preganglionic uh, neurons of the autonomic nervous system. Then uh, the next structure that we talk about is interneurons or also called as connector neurons. So as the name suggests, connector, that means it is going to uh, link one structure to the other. So interneurons, they are linkages between the sensory and the motor neurons at the same or different levels and it also forms the spinal reflex arcs. Okay, so... Three main categories in the gray matter are sensory neurons, low motor neurons, and interneurons. Now, uh, let's talk about the neuronal architecture of the spinal gray matter. This was in general. Let's talk about the neuronal architecture now. The cells of the same type are clustered into groups which occur in long columns, right? So, these, um, if we take a transverse section of the spinal cord, these columns, they appear as layers, especially within the dorsal horn. Here, if you can see, they are in the form of layers in the dorsal horn. These layers are called as lamina of the rex and are numbered by Roman numerals from 1 to 10, starting from the uh, tip of the dorsal horn and moving ventrally. So, if you can see in the picture, the uh, numbering is done from the tip of the dorsal horn up to the central, uh, this thing, central part. These uh, rex lamina, they comprise of 10 layers. So they are num uh, numbered from 1 to 10 and they were identified by a Swedish scientist in the 1950s. Why are we learning about this uh, lamina of rex? Is because all the nucleus or all the uh, ganglions that we are going to talk about are going to be located in these areas. So the primary nucleus, which are uh, responsible for most of the function in the spinal cord, they are located in these layers of the lamina of rex. 
Now, nerve cell groups in the dorsal horn. So, your dorsal horn, that is the uh, posterior horn that we are talking about. There are four main, four main groups or four main nerve cell groups in the dorsal horn. First is substantia gelatinosa, substantia gelatinosa, nucleus proprius, nucleus dorsalis and visceral afferent nucleus. These are the four main um, nerve cell groups which are present in the dorsal horn of the spinal cord and are responsible for most of the sensory function. First and foremost is the substantia gelatinosa. So, uh, it is present in the red lamina layer 2 and uh, it is located at the apex of the dorsal horn. It is composed of large neurons and it extends throughout the length of the spinal cord. That means from C1 to L2. Then afferent for these, um, this substantia gelatinosa is dorsal root fibers which are, connect, uh, which are concerned with pain, temperature and touch. So, here from this... Um, nerve cell group or the nucleus, the tracts are going to be formed in the anterior horn, uh, in the posterior horn in the white matter. Okay. So, whatever tract is responsible for pain, temperature and touch will go through or will be in this area. Okay. Then, nucleus proprius, it is present in the uh, lamina 4 of the uh, lamina of Rex. It is located just anteriorly to the substantia gelatinosa and it also is composed of large neurons. It also extends throughout the length of the spinal cord. The inference uh, concerning this um, nucleus is uh, concerned with senses of position and movement which is proprioception. Next nucleus is the nucleus dorsalis. Nucleus dorsalis is, uh, is present in the uh, Rex lamina 7. Here, if you can see in the picture, uh, it is located at the base of the dorsal horn, base of the posterior horn. This uh, nucleus is also composed of large neurons. It extends, unlike um, substantia gelatinosa and nucleus proprius, this dorsalis or nucleus dorsalis extends only from C8 to L3, L4 segments. It is associated with proprioceptive endings. The dorsal root, uh, sorry, the Efferents of the uh, of this uh, nucleus, they are concerned with information from the muscle spindles and the tendon organs. Next nucleus is the visceral efferent nucleus. So, as the name suggests, visceral, right? So, uh, the efferents are going to come from the visceral organs. Okay, this uh, visceral efferent nucleus is present in the lamina seven of the Rex, and located it is located lateral to the dors uh, nucleus dorsalis. So, this is. Uh, nucleus dorsalis, just lateral to the nucleus dorsalis will be your uh, visceral efferent nucleus. It is composed mostly of medium-sized neurons and it extends from T1 to L3 segments. The efferents, as the name suggests, is going to come from the visceral organs. So, um, visceral efferent nucleus, uh, as we learned in the uh, previous slide, that um, whatever cell groups are going to present in the lateral horn, or the lateral column is going to be uh, preganglionic neurons to the autonomic nervous system. The autonomic nervous system is con concerned with uh, visceral organs or supply the visceral organs. Hence, these uh, VAN or the visceral efferent nucleus are going to is going to be a part of the autonomic nervous system and it is present in the lateral horn. Okay. Um, now let's talk about nerve cell groups in the ventral horns. So uh, motor neurons or Neurons which are present in the ventral horn, we talked about it, they are called as lower motor neurons. Okay. So, um, anything motor is going to be present in the ventral horn of the spinal cord and uh, for the concern of the spinal cord, it is also, it is called as lower motor neurons. Then motor neurons in the ventral horn, they are of two types. First is large multipolar cells and less numerous, smaller multipolar cells. So the large multipolar cells, they are uh, whose axons pass out in the ventral roots of the spinal cord as alpha efferents, which innervate extrafusal fibers of the skeletal muscles. So um, all of us know that alpha motor neuron, okay, this is one of the types or one of the uh, motor neurons in the ventral one. They are large multipolar cells and they come from the ventral roots of the spinal cord here ventral roots of the spinal cord and they innervate the extrafusal muscle fibers of the skeletal muscles. 
Next is the smaller uh, multipolar uh, neurons. So they are called as gamma motor neurons. Here, if you can see in the picture, these gamma motor neurons, they are, uh, they also arise from the ventral uh, horns or ventral roots of the spinal nerves or ventral horn of the spinal cord. And it in a way, it's the intrafusal muscle fibers of the neuromuscular spindle. So here, if you can see, these are the extrafusal or bigger fibers, which are uh, supplied by the alpha motor neuron and the intrafusal fibers are supplied by the gamma motor neuron. Both alpha and the gamma motor neurons are under the influence of the descending pathways from the brain. So anything which, uh, as we talked about, motor is always going to be from the center to the periphery, right? So all of these neurons are going to be parts of uh, descending tracks or descending pathways which are going to come from the brain towards, towards the periphery. Then uh, these were uh, motor neurons in the ventral horn. Let's talk about motor neurons. Uh, here they are um, organized into three groups, which is medial, central and lateral. So the medial uh, motor neurons are uh, going to be present in most segments and they are going to be, they are going to innervate the muscles of the neck and trunk, including the intercostal and the abdominal muscles. Okay. Then the central uh, motor neurons are going to be present in the, uh, in some cervical uh, region, let's say for, uh, for example, phrenic nerve or the phrenic region, spinal and spinal accessory and the lumbosacral segments, which is the, which is from L2 to S1. And the lateral uh, motor neurons, they are going to be present in the cervical and the lumbosacral segments and they, are, they innervate muscles of the limbs. Neurons supplying the flexors, uh, flexor muscles are located dorsal to neurons for the extensor muscles. So the extensor muscles are going to be present more anteriorly, whereas the neurons supplying the flexor muscles of the uh, body are going to be supplied, uh, going to be present more posteriorly. Then uh, nerve cell groups in the lateral horn. So this we talked about the ventral horn, which is the anterior uh, part. So we talked about nerve cell groups in the uh, dorsal horn, which is the posterior horn, the ventral horn, uh, which is the anterior. And now we are going to talk about nerve cell groups in the lateral horn. As I said, nerve cell groups in the lateral horn, they are going to be concerned with the autonomic nervous system. Okay. So uh, these are small columns which are composed of smaller neurons. It extends from T1 to L2, L3 segments and it gives rise to the uh, segment which extends from T1 to L2, L3 will give rise to preganglionic sympathetic nerve fibers and the segments or the fibers which extend from S2 to S4 will give rise to preganglionic parasympathetic fibers. This is very important when we are going to deal with uh, autonomic nervous system as a whole. Or uh, when we talk about dysfunctions of autonomic nervous system, this anatomy comes very handy. So uh, nerve cell groups in the lateral horn are going to be small columns which are composed of smaller neurons. Uh, one group is going to extend from uh, T1 to L2, L3 segments, which, are, which is going to give rise to preganglionic sympathetic fibers. And uh, the other group which extends from S2 to S4 is going to give rise to preganglionic parasympathetic fibers.